Today's cup is brought to you by Champagne Raspberry. Okay. Wow. Hi guys. I don't know how to change the lighting to make me look less white. I think this is just how I look. So, hi. We are back at it with another writing vlog. Um, got some soothing laundry machine ambiance sounds going on in the background if you hear that. Um, today is a mess, which we're not going to get into. We're just gonna be right here in our safe little writing bubble where nothing can touch us. Here's a little update. So um, last time we did a writing vlog, it was super fun. I basically just sat down, came up with a first, first of all, let me pour my tea. I basically came up with a first sentence and then sort of just showed you how I can build from there, how easily you can just kind of start a story. In the long run, I think it's much better to plan, but um, it's also okay to just have fun when you're writing and just go for it. Um, and that can be a part of a later plan of a of a book. I'm actually really stoked. I've kind of worked that story a little bit more. And um, it's not my priority, but it's still one that's kind of in the back of my mind. And I, I like where it's going. So anyway, but there is one story that I'm much more connected to. That it's the one that I want to finish. <clears throat> Which um, seems like it could take many years but that's okay because I'm having fun and I have it I've talked about it before I've been really vague about it because it is one that I'm actually like I don't know I, you know when things are more important to you you're a little bit more cagey about them so I'm not gonna go into too many details um maybe I will I don't know we'll see as the vlog continues if I loosen up but yeah I've written a significant amount of this story. I have it pretty much all mapped out and I realized that there's so much more work that I actually need to do. Some work that I should have done in the beginning. It would have helped me a lot more and things that I'm just learning along the way because this is really just a learning activity for me, learning how to write a story. I know how to read them. Writing them is a whole nother ball game. But before I really dive in, I wanna give a shout out to this video's sponsor. It's sponsored by Skillshare, which has an entire section about creative writing. I'm just saying, I was going to talk to you about, I've been taking a couple of their classes as far as like, uh, more like time management and just creativity in general, how to kind of flex your creative muscle. But today, as I was looking, and I just started taking it, um, I'm so stoked. There's actually a course called The Writer's Toolkit, Six Steps to a Successful Writing Habit, which is something that I really had going on in the summer. I would write every single day and that's pretty much how I got to 50K words. So I really wanna get back into the writing habit and wouldn't you know it, Skillshare has this class and it is taught by Simon Van Bowie. <clears throat> and he wrote, I mentioned it in a recent video, um, one of my favorite collections of short stories and he's teaching a class that was just, it was a very exciting thing. Very exciting thing to find out. Anyway, the first 1,000 people who click the link in my description box will get a free trial of the Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's about $10 a month. And like I said, a huge, incredible section on creative writing from poetry, short stories, um, even when it comes to just like this one is learning to get in a writing habit, learning to find inspiration, creativity, etc. I really like it. It's been really, really helping me. I highly recommend it to you. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this. Please check it out, link it down below. Also check out The Secret Lives of People in Love by Simon Van Bowie because I really liked it. So what I am doing right now is I basically, very recently I went through and I just by hand rewrote the plot <laughs> essentially. And that got me asking myself a lot of questions. I started to notice a lot of flaws, a lot of, um, kind of just weak points in my plot. And a lot of that is honestly character based. And I was watching a YouTube channel that I love called Lessons from the Screenplay. And he was talking about in screenwriting, which is pretty, I mean, all creative writing has the same fundamental things. It is often said that the strength of your character is only as strong as the characters want. And so that's kind of how people get invested in a character is if they have 
a want, a reason to be doing things. I don't know, if you're reading a book and there's a character that's just kind of along for the ride and doesn't really have any reason to be there, doesn't have, you know, a lot of connections, whether it's they're there to support their friend or whatever, you aren't really connected to them. But if you have someone who, you know, it, whether it's revenge or whether they're trying to discover themselves or, you know, something like that, when they have a reason to be doing the things that they're doing, you tend to pay more attention and feel more connected. So what I did is I literally just got out my notebook and I just wrote every single one of my characters. You can't see it and that's good, I'm not showing you. But I just basically wrote like, what is her want? Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. What is his want? Bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. And so having those written down, I was able to look at the actions that I'm putting them through and seeing if, if the want comes across to you. So I'm obviously not gonna be like, my main girl, wants this. I'm not going to tell you straight up. So I need to know, do you understand? Do you get my character's desire? Why my character is doing this? So that's pretty much what I'm working on today is just working on the wants, the whys, the whys. That was something that was really fun. So yeah, I think I have a pretty good base. Um, how should I? Okay, well, I'll, I'll tell you a tiny bit about it. Without giving you any of the plot, how this story came to be is the question of... All right, uh, so if you're watching this, you're probably into fantasy, right? Um, my channel is has become mostly a fantasy channel, strangely. I used to be all thrillers. But so, you know, we're into fantasy, we're into fairy tales, we're into other worlds. And my question to you, and my question that the book poses to my main character and to myself is today, Right now, you're sitting watching YouTube and something or someone opens a portal. There's just this magical door. Maybe there's no one there. Maybe it's just a hole in the wall. Um, or maybe someone comes out and is talking to you, tells you why you should come through the door. Would you do it? You know, if, if you're crawling through a cupboard and you see a door to another world at the back, would you actually crawl through? Like, would you take that risk of you might not come back. You might have to leave every single thing right now. When I was little, I used to think like, yes, if I ever get a chance, I'm totally gonna run into this magical other world. The more I get older, I kind of wonder like, would I though? Would I? As much as I want to, as much as I talk the talk. Yeah, so basically my, my main character is posed with that. She lives her life mentally in other worlds, but when she is given the opportunity to go into one, it's kind of a tricky situation. That's that's where we're at. So I'm gonna write a little bit more and um, reworking scenes is so hard. Anyway, yeah, let's less talking. This is already super long. Less talking, more writing. I'll meet you in just a little bit on the other side. One big issue that I have is names of places um, and not being able to do placeholders. Like if I don't come up with a name, I can't move forward. I can't just build this place without it having a, a name. I literally, yesterday I was writing and I was trying to change the location of the first scene and I needed to, I wanted to change the name um, of a place where they were at. And I just sat there for, I kid you not, 30 minutes in front of my screen, not being able to push forward and write a single sentence because I couldn't come up with a good name. Ah, that is something I really need to get over. So yeah, progress, progress is being made. Hi, I've had my fun. Um, I've just really been outlining and I wrote a couple um, mini scenes that I know I wanna place in certain places. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go for a walk. And when I get home, um, it's probably where I'm gonna end this because I'm sorry, writing vlogs are so hard because it's like I just sit and I'm just staring at my computer. So um, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna end it with talking about something that happened to me recently that I think is very important that we talk about as writers. And yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll talk to you in a second, but I need to go stretch my legs and stretch my mind. So, see you then.
Okay, I'm back from my walk. Hello, friends. So this is the last thing that I want to talk about, but I think it's pretty important. Um, and that's just the pure act of getting inspired. And I think I'll do another video about this another time. But just to point it out, because it happened to me recently, I was listening to this podcast that was talking about the film industry and kind of one of the things that is really common with filmmakers, like specifically film students, is that they tend to make a lot of similar content because they're so, they're in the same world. Like their whole lives as film students, for the most part, their whole lives are focused on school and film school and they don't really have a life outside of classes and stuff like that. So a lot of their content seems to look the same because they don't have a lot of different inspiration outlets. So the moral of the story is to remember to disengage from the stuff. Like if you're working on something, a creative project, you really need to disengage from it and do something else. Like even if you feel like you're wasting time, like, oh, I should be writing. Oh, I should be doing this. Going out and living and like turning your mind off and experiencing things outside of your project is part of the creative process. It's so important. For example, just the other day, you probably saw it on my main channel, I went shopping for flowers and I bought these beautiful white orchids and they lasted for a really long time. I learned that if you put sugar and lemon in the water, it makes them live longer. Anyway, but they did eventually die and the way that the orchids died is that their entire heads <laughs> I guess you would call it, the entire flower fell off, like completely still pretty preserved, but just fell off. So I was picking them up, they all fell at the same time pretty much, and so I was picking them up and I ended up with a handful of these beautiful white orchids and something about that, like just holding them really gently in my hands, I was like, this needs to be in my book somehow. And actually it ties in really well with, um, Kind of a relationship that I'm building with two of my characters and I would have never that would have never crossed my mind like that action I would have never come up with it myself and it was only because I just did a really mundane thing like I picked up dead flowers that were on my living room co coffee table but but it created this really beautiful scene so just another thing that I have that I do is um when I'm out and about um, I will just, if something makes an impression on me, if something's really beautiful, um, I will just write it down. So, for example, the other day I was taking a walk and I really liked how if you hold out your hand, the snow melts on your palm immediately. And I just really liked that imagery. Or, you know, holding, like kind of cradling these orchids in your hand and stuff like that. Just keep a record of it and, and you know, living and experiencing life is what makes world's so rich. Just be present is what I'm trying to say. Live, be present, observe, and little things will come to you and they will make your book that much better, I think. Personally, having never written a book. <laughs> so on that walk, I was listening to some really good music and I have like a couple things I want to work on. So I'm going to go back to writing and um, I, if I sound funny, I there is a sneeze sitting in my left nostril. And so I'm talking, but I'm I'm on the verge of a sneeze. I'm going to get back to writing and I will see you guys next time. So yeah, that's the end. This was a long video. Maybe next time I'll work on my other story so that we can like look at um, kind of what I have actually written together, which will be fun. So yeah, once again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and the first 1000 people to click the link in my description box um, will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. Um, which is access to all of the classes. And then after that, it's about $10 a month. And I will see you guys next time. Good luck on any writing project you might be working on. Good luck cooking something up if it's still just up here. It's still there, you know? Um, so yeah, I wish you luck with everything and I will see you guys next week. Thank you for joining me. Bye.